Okay, so we proved conservation of charge. Now we we'll prove uh, conservation of energy. That is um, very, very difficult to do in comparing with, with, with what we did with the conservation of charge. Okay, so we can't do the same that we did with uh, conservation of charge because uh, we will need uh, the use of function u dot u derivative in the time dimension and this is in h1 and minus 1 here and we don't find uh, for example how we can multiply um, um, u point and u point for example we don't have defined it so what we are going to do is to um, define a family of operators M epsilon defined as uh, epsilon a plus one or identity okay to the minus one. This is for epsilon positive. Okay, a is the operator minus Laplacian plus m squared, okay. Okay, so now we can consider the embedded, the sequences of embedded spaces. H3 halves embedded in H1 a half embedded in H minus 1 a half embedded in H minus 3 halves uh, and so on so I'm going to prove it but it, you, one can prove that uh, the following properties for M epsilon first that for epsilon and s we have that uh, um, m epsilon is bounded it's a a bounded map from hs into hs plus one okay so if we have somebody in h minus one and a half it will give us a function in h one and a half okay something that we see is going to be useful we the norm m epsilon u hs um, is less than equal than u hs with u in hs and uh, s real k okay. so it's bound and the constant is one and uh, for u in hs and s in r we have that uh, m epsilon u converges to u strongly okay in hs as a plane goes to c okay so is it telling us that this is approximate the identity okay so now we have e dt e dt okay so what's going to be this well we can say that this is e prime u of t multiplied by ut okay 
chain rule but we want to know what this is so let's consider e of u plus ev what would what will be this okay so let's recall what was e uh, eu is one and a half ux a let's say ux and then we have f of u ux squared okay so let's plug in that so we have um, one and a half um, well u plus eb it was conjugated here we had um, well let's put just the square root this is to always to refer um, minus replication plus m squared okay this was of u e epsilon b e x plus one and a fourth k convolution u plus e b um, squared u plus e b epsilon b squared absolute value dx on the other hand we know that this will be also equal if we make an expansion of that to eu plus e e prime u epsilon e prime u b plus sometimes that uh, go to zero as epsilon squared so our interest will be in this term because the dt e that is what we want to know if it concerns it will be e prime u ut and we are just taking ut as b okay so um let's continue with this part and then try to see which are the terms that have epsilon so um if we continue with the with this we'll have well one and a half you conjugate uh, the uh, square root and u one side then we will have epsilon um, well b conjugate square root u and then we will have you conjugate but now with e b epsilon b okay then we will have a term with e squared that we don't want it because we just care about the first order plus so now this part we will have well, one a fourth integral k convolution um well we have to expand this so u squared plus two epsilon r e u b plus epsilon squared uh, b squared okay this and now we have to um, expand this now okay so that will be u squared plus 2 er uh, real part of u b um, plus well sometimes squared epsilon squared um well um uh, here e squared b squared dx okay so let's uh, first uh, make some room and uh, 
Well, let's try to see what we have here. It's these two. So, what is equal to this, these two long terms? Well, these long terms are um, first. We have one fourth k convolution u squared. Okay, and then again, u squared here. Okay, so we can associate with this, and then this one that is outside. Okay, what about the following? Uh, we have a uh, epsilon. Okay, let's take epsilon fourth outside. I will have k convolution u squared k okay. k convolution u squared and a 2 r epsilon the epsilon is outside so this is uh, the real part of u b ok and uh, we have another term with epsilon that it will be um, k convolution. Well, real part of U B, and now at outside is going to be the U squared. Okay. So let's uh, put all this together. That is all what it gave us. Okay, so this is what we have after making all the all the, all, all the um, well. First, we had the Taylor expansion, and then all the things that we've been doing. Okay, so now. We want to see the parts that have epsilon because we want to know what E U B is. Okay, so what parts have epsilon? Well, this one. We can see this that this a uh, scalar product. We can say that this is okay. So B square root u plus u square root b okay and we will see what that is plus well we will have k convolution u squared e k um, because of this and we have these two outside Okay, but we have a four side, and we will have the same for this part. It will be k convolution. Well, um, here I forgot. A u, because this is convolution u squared u. Okay, like that. Here again, here again, it will be u squared u b because this is a convolution of scalars so we can uh, put it in and take it out okay and this is uh, um, again is multiplied by two of the real part fourth okay okay and now we have to remember because here I forgot the one half that comes from here so we have one and a half and one and a half and this is equal to um, B U conjugated, okay? Because this is self joint, we can pass it here and then just take it around. And as we are taking the real uh, scalar product to be the same, so then this will have only one, this will be this plus this, that is what we wanted to see, what it is E prime U and B. In the next video, we will continue to see 